Good morning, my name is Jörg Hausalter. We're here at the PCR London Valves 2022. And with me are Sam Dawkins from Great Britain and Wolfgang Rottbauer from Germany. And we're discussing today a little bit what we have now experienced um, in this meeting. Um, there were quite a few uh, new studies and clinical trials coming out and we have also some new technologies gonna, uh, available in our hands and this is what we would like to discuss um, in this uh, interview. So <clears throat> Sam, can you share with us the recent studies which have been presented at this meeting and what is your take on those? Yeah, we saw a number of studies uh, presented here um, in London. Um, the first that I'd like to mention is the class 2D randomized trial comparing Pascal and MitraClip. We saw the one-year data for that. Um, what that showed is that uh, out to six months, uh, there was a sustained and durable reduction in mitral regurgitation. Um, the study was powered to show non-inferiority, which is achieved and the uh, mitral valve gradients remained stable, as you would expect out to six months, but it's reassuring to see that. The other data that was shown was um, the MyClasp uh, six-month data. So that was looking at uh, the outcome, both in terms of mitral regurgitation reduction and also in terms of quality of life outcomes. Uh, so what we saw out to six months was, was again a sustained reduction in mitral regurgitation with 83% of patients having zero or one plus residual mitral regurgitation. Small differences between FMR, functional mitral regurgitation, and degenerative mitral regurgitation with slightly higher percentage of patients, 86% of patients with one plus or zero plus MR in the degenerative MR group, which is what you'd expect in that slightly more straightforward anatomy. Um, we're all interested in MR reduction, but our patients are interested in how they feel. Um, and what was nice to see in the my class data was a significant improvement in NYHA status uh, in the patients treated with Pascal. And then there, there were two additional trials, the, the class 2D registry. Do you have also a little bit some information so about this? To, to my mind, the class 2D registry is actually the most interesting data. Class 2D trial was looking at patients with uh, more straightforward anatomy, A2, P2 kind of pathology, and no leaflet calcification, small valves, multiple jets, etc. But you and I know that in the real world we uh, don't see that many of those patients, and we see a lot of patients who are in the registry. So those are the patients who couldn't be in the trial, so with commissural jets, calcification, small valves, multiple jets. And again, we saw very good results. Uh, as you would predict, the reduction in mitral regurgitation was a little bit less, so you had a, a smaller proportion of patients with one or zero uh, mitral regurgitation. But what was really interesting and what's really important is that the quality of life changed. The delta was pretty much the same in the registry versus the trial. Absolutely. This, I think it was a very important finding in, in, in these two trials. Now, Wolfgang, I would like to ask you, um, there were also some, some real world data coming out, especially now from Germany, where we have a lot of experience with these new devices. Um, and always real world data are sometimes a little bit different than all those very well controlled studies. Do you have any insights into these uh, recent data? Yeah, I think we, we saw them yesterday and, 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 and there are especially data coming out of a multi-center study um, coordinated by the Cone Group. and. and and Victor Maury was presenting it, and I think they had very impressive results um, in both, and I think this is different now on, on functional and degenerative disease, so, so we, we get a kind of hint what we will expect from the randomized trials um, on, 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 on functional MR. And uh, they did a propensity um, cohort matching on a large patient population, I think it was over 600 patients they had in there. And they basically saw, um, again, non-inferiority of, of, of a new device, the Pascal device, in comparison to, to the mitral clip. And, and, and very decent um, 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 clinical results regarding MR reduction, although they weren't as good as, 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 as seen in, in, in the other registries and in, in, in the randomized trial. But, but, but again, I'm, I'm very impressive for also the, the safety data. And <coughs> concerning your data, you have also some, some data gained in, in, in your hospital and, and within your yeah. working group. 
Yeah, so so it, I think it will be published back to back, and and and, and we also did it with with, with you together and and and, and Bader and Hausen. So we also combined it, did a similar approach, and and basically ended up um, with the same results. And, and and what we even have in in, in the cohort we are we are analyzing is is one year outcome data, and and and, and not uh, just only regarding MR reduction, but, but uh, also in relation to to mortality, and 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 we see there are impressive effects. But again. These um, uh, registries confirm um, in a propensity way um, of, of, of matching that um, that we can gain with the novel device at, at least as good results as, as we, 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 we achieve with the Macho Club. Well, that's really a very important finding that, at least from my point of view, that the real world data are really confirming what we are seeing in these clinical trials because it's not always the case, as we all know very well. Now, you were talking about this new device. Uh, Sam, can you talk us a little bit of, uh, through this device? What is new? What is, what is, where's the excitement? Yeah, so the precision device is something that the, the three of us have been using now for a, for a short time. And it's an iterative update on the, on the Pascal system. Um, the key changes are around the implant handle. So the precision handle looks very different to the previous generation of the device. Now we all got very used to the previous generation of the device, it's easy to use, it's, it's forgiving in complex anatomy, but one thing that people uh, often found quite difficult, and I, I do quite a lot of proctoring of Pascal in the mitral and the tricuspid position, something that people sometimes struggled with was getting the clip orientation right and then, then it not continuing to transmit and continuing to turn, and that can add a bit of time to the procedure um, and sometimes was a little bit frustrating. With the um, precision handle, you really get one-to-one -one torque. You turn the implant to an orientation and it stays there, and that, that's a, quite a big change. The other thing is it's a little bit stiffer, so when, you're, when there's a lot of turbulence, when you're going right into the commissure, it's, it's pretty easy to position very precisely exactly where you want to be without, without the implant um, bending and, and not, not quite transmitting the, the movement. Um, Finally, the release is a little bit different, so um, there's no cutting of sutures anymore. Uh, you're simply pulling sutures out, and the um, cable release uh, is is now ratcheted, so it doesn't turn back on itself when you, when you release. So some iterative changes that make the procedure more straightforward and easier to, to teach, and I think probably will reduce the learning curve with this device. You talked about um, those new features, the, the more precise application of the device into the mitral valve. Are there some specific anatomies where you think this kind of device has really you know, a new step forward for us where we can really get a better outcome for our patients? Well, I think, I think we've all been pushing the boundaries with this technology, honestly. And I think we know that you can treat A2 and P2 pathology safely, reliably, with very predictable results. But we have a lot of patients who have much more complex anatomy. And the thing that we all get nervous about with doing these procedures is getting stuck under the valve. And if you have patients with severe annular calcification, for example, um, or you're going right into the commissure, you're concerned about interacting with cords or, or getting stuck under calcium. Um, the Pascal device has the unique feature of elongating, so you can go wherever you want to go, and if you feel that you're interacting, you simply elongate, so straighten out the device, and you can come back into the left atrium, reset, and try again. And to have that ability to elongate and get, it, get out of trouble uh, gives you the confidence to take on much harder anatomy. Right. Well, when you have the same big experience with the first generation, but also now with this new um, Pascal Precision System, How's your experience with this new device? Yeah, I think the name stands for it. So it, it gives you precise control um, over the procedure and everything is very controlled. You can control the angle um, you enter um, um, the, the valve. Um, you can control the deployment and uh, you can control the clocking and everything is very, very precise. And still, it's then, and we saw data on that yesterday too, on, on the 250 commercial cases. Um, it's impressive what kind of safety you're generating with such a device. And I think there's a real improvement and a step forward. And now I, I, I think from, from a Macho Club perspective, we are kind of moving in between. So we gain some, some, some advantages of, of the Macho Club back because we are very precise, although we still have enough flexibility to not injure the anatomy. Now we talked always now about the mitral 
space. Of course, this device is unique because we can use it on both valves, the mitral valve as well as the tricuspid valve. And does it have some specific features? You think it's now more attractable to use the Pascal position system on, also on the tricuspid valve? Or, or certainly, I think Sam pointed that out. So, so, so elongation is much more important on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the right side of the heart and on the tricuspid intervention than it is um, on, on, on the mitral side, at least in my perspective. And, and, and also the valve anatomy is much more complex, so, so there are a lot of features that can be used. Also the flexibility of the system or the passive way of grasping and, 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 and closing the device um, um, basically is very gentle to the valve, so, so you can do this kind of tarsal maneuver, come from the lateral side, go to the septum, and still have a very safe um, um, procedure that is very gentle to, to the valve anatomy, so, so you, you, you don't see any, any injury of, 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 of the valve. Yeah, certainly. So, so, so in summary, if I, I get it right, what, what you're saying is, the two of you is, now we have a system which has a significant improvement, which allows us to get better results on, on, our, pay, um, on our MR reduction, but also TR reduction, we apparently are probably are also going to be safer with the elongation device, which will also be, of course, for the benefit of our patients. So is there something else we would love to see in the, in the future um, in terms of the next developments? Do you have any suggestions for the companies? Yeah, I think we, we see very significant reduction of MR already. So, so 80 to 90 percent are going into MR grade one, and, and, um, but that there are still some patients left that, that, that do not end up with a perfect result. And I think this has to be, be, be addressed in the future with, with novel features and, and one that allows us to work in the commissures is, is, is the ACE device. I think we learned that and, and, and also the precision um, steering um, um, gives us um, a hint um, to, to get even better on that side. Wonderful. I thank you both for coming and I think we had a great interview. There's a lot to come, of course, and I'm sure we will go, when we meet next year in this place, there's a lot of new studies, perhaps also new technologies we can discuss about. Thank you so much. Thank you.